Hey, so I just wanted to show everyone this homebrew retro computer that I designed and built recently. Uh, it was inspired by the world's first stored program computer, uh, the SSEM, often called the Manchester Baby. The Baby used a device called a Williams Tube to store both the program and the data. Uh, I won't go into details about how a Williams Tube works, but it's essentially a CRT uses a delay memory where the delay is caused by the properties of the phosphor on the screen. Now the Manchester Baby had another CRT which displayed the entire contents of the RAM. It's like the Williams Tube but without the, uh, without the detector on the screen so you can actually see it. Uh, you can see the dots and the dashes. This machine has a similar thing. A screen with 64 dots on it which represents the entire RAM of this machine. Which is just like it was on the Manchester Baby. Um, all of the RAM is visible. So this machine only has 64 bits of RAM. Manchester Baby had 1024, so this is considerably smaller in program space. So, let me show you how it works. Uh, there's a program that I have memorized now. Oh, hang on, let me just... helps to turn it on first. <laughs> so you can see down here we're in memory view which means this is going to show uh, the entire memory. So I'll put a program in, which I've written before. So to put the program in, first of all you have to make sure the user switch is on. Um, then you can put in the data for the line that you're currently editing, which is selected with this these address switches here, and then you just pulse the right switch to put that in the memory. Uh, these switches can go in two different directions, so you can push them up to leave them on permanently, or you can push them down and they spring back to the centre, uh, which is quite handy for when you just want to pulse the right thing or run it for a short amount of time. Uh, so, put the rest of this program in. This is a program that generates a random number between 1 and 6, which is just rolling a die. So, if I press, uh, well, come out of user mode first, uh, let's put that on full speed. So if I run this now, you'll see in these last three LEDs at the bottom here, they, they sort of flicker when it's running, but then when I let go, it settles down, so there I've, I roll a 2 with my die. Run it again, that's a 5, and again, that's a 6. Let's slow that down a bit. So what it's actually doing is just counting from 1 to 6 and then resetting. So that's just a simple demo of a small program that is kind of useful. There's not many of them given that there's only 8 bytes of memory, but it was just a sort of experiment in trying to build my own CPU, which I've wanted to do for quite a while. Recently learned how to use VHDL, so bought a Papilio 1 FPGA kit, wrote some VHDL, put it on, and turned it into this. Uh, there's some other interesting things as well. So, on the side here, there's a GPIO connector. Um, currently the only thing that I've got which I can plug in there. This is something I was working on. <coughs> this is just uh, a bunch of LEDs which show the current state of the output register. There we go. So the LEDs there little bit the same pattern that is there. So that's just a demo of GPIO stuff. Oops. Space. So the first line there just loads a value, that one stores it in the GPIO output register and the third one just stops the program. So this is the number that it loaded, 01010110 and on the lights Zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, zero. That way. There's also 
another interesting program that only just fits on the machine. This is a program that initially I thought wouldn't fit on the machine because it's so small. So I'm going to run this in slow mode and we've got to switch to the register view for this one to work. There we go. Nice little silent LED pattern. So I didn't think this would be possible given the small amount of RAM available. But it turns out it is. Uh, it's all open source. You can go and get the code, make your own one, and there is even um, a simulator which somebody wrote for this. Uh, someone that I know, someone from York Hack Space. Uh, here we go. So this is a simulation of the computer. This is on GitHub as well. You can go and play around with it here if you like. There's details about everything, everything you need to know to be able to program it run your own programs, give it a go. So, let's take a look inside. some light on that. Might be a bit better. So there's not much to this really. So all of the switches and things are on the lid. That's a pre-built LED matrix there. And then inside that's the battery. Um, under there is a battery charging circuit and booster to get up to 5 volts and then under here that's the GPIO connection there on the side and I unplug that so this is where the magic happens This is the FPGA that I mentioned earlier. So there's not a lot to it really. It's fairly simple to make. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, if you want more information, there'll be a link in the description to my website, which will have pictures, details of um, how to get the code, how to run the simulator, do whatever you like. So there we go. That is the C88 homebrew computer. And I almost forgot. Next project is to make a bigger one. This LED matrix. With this one I can actually simulate the Manchester baby. Since this is a 32 by 32 rather than just 8 by 8.